What's going on? Oh, oh, we gotta do it right. We gotta sit the mic down. We gotta put them up tall and pro This happened last week. And I'm gonna be honest. I personally, I blame Sir Maxwell Wigglesworth for the technical difficulties. I have someone now that I can blame all of these tech difficulties on other than myself. What's going on, Canes fans and my college football family, of course. What a crazy day for college football. Uh, in this stream, we're going to talk about the comments from Miami Athletic Director Dan Radakovich in regards to the ACC and him showing some support for the conference. And it has a lot of Canes fans up in arms. And it has a lot of other opposing teams fans wondering what Miami is doing, right? There, people are talking about, is Miami going to get left behind? Why is Miami all in on the ACC when you have schools like Florida State and Clemson suing them and trying to get out of it? We're going to talk about it a little in depth here tonight. I'll give you the statements from Dan Radakovich. We'll break it down, try to dissect it a little bit, do a deep dive, and then I want to get some opinions from you guys. We're also going to discuss the Kool-Aid a bit. That's right. I know it gets brought up each and every week, but it's still, you know, always brought up during spring, you know, because there are so many fans that are hyped up. You have people saying they're seeing things at practice they've never seen before. Then you have other people who say this is what we say every year. So we're going to talk about how much Kool-Aid you're drinking, if any at all. And I'll give you my Kool-Aid update as well for those that are interested but i would like to uh provide a little update while we wait for people to find their virtual seats on sir maxwell wigglesworth riley you haven't missed anything at all yet he is definitely much much more comfortable uh, if i seem distracted at any point tonight it's because my door is open and it's normally closed so that way he can go back and forth between my office and my wife's office because he has a little bit of separation anxiety at the moment. But we've had him since last Wednesday. So he's, we've had him, what, seven, eight, seven, eight-ish days, something like that, seven or eight full days. And his personality is, is dead. I'm, I'm just going to pin this up here. I'm just going to pin this up real quick. So his personality is is starting to come out a little bit more as he gets more comfortable, you know, living here. So I just wanted to give you an update. He's doing good. Uh, he's a year and a half, so he's kind of still uh, kind of a puppy. Uh, last night, man, he had he had the zoomies hardcore. I think I can show you a, a clip on my phone. I'm just gonna have to show you my phone screen. I, I can't show it on the computer, but this will just kind of give you an idea. This was at about midnight, I think midnight or 1 a.m. last night. This will give you an idea. This is right here in the studio, and I was trying to work on some notes. I was actually trying to work on notes for this specific stream, and we're going to get into football talk here in just a second, but this, this is what he was doing while I was trying to make notes for this stream. Look at that. And what he does is he runs full speed at my couch and tries to jump up as high as he possibly can on the soundproof foam. He treats it like a trampoline. And then he just bounces off of it. And sometimes I'll lay down in the floor and he'll jump off like he's a wrestler on the top rope. And he tries to just body slam me. So it's been good times. It's been good times. But he's hanging out in here right now. I can give you guys a little bit of an update. We'll, we'll put him on camera. Come here, Max. Come here, Max. Your friends and family want to see you. Oh, he's got a bone. He'll probably play with it. We'll give him a second. He might. Max? Are you going to say hi or no? You're not going to say hi to, you, to your fans? He's a liar. Max! Max! 
Yeah, he's pumped up. Did he poop? No. I thought. Here it goes. Yep. I'm telling you, this this doggo acts like he's jacked up on Mountain Dew, twenty four seven. He's a wild one. <laughs> so he's definitely getting settled in. Definitely getting settled in. Like I said, hey, you guys adopted him too. He's part of your family as well. <laughs> no wonder you named his, him Wigglesworth. His butt never stops wiggling. Never, never stops wiggling. Hey, yo! What's up? We got AO in the building. Max is going to replace Parrish at running back. He probably thinks he can. He's he's run me over a couple of times. I do not hate Chris Gaffney. Well, I know where the hate comes from. It's because Chris gifted Briley that beautiful U logo. And it looks so good by his name. I keep trying to tell Briley he should just embrace it. This is an opportunity for him to transition over to being a Canes fan. So, I mean... Honestly, Chris did him a huge favor and provided a, a fantastic opportunity that he might not have had otherwise. So I think that he should be super thankful. We got John Bird in the building. Chris Gaffney. We got Nick Snyder. Who else we got? Melissa, a.k.a. Hoodie Girl. Greatness inspires greatness. Danny. Yo, it's good to see you, Danny. We got Stephanie, my UM wife. Tropical in the building. Steven. Hey, it's good to see you, Katie. You said you were going to be here, and here you are. Love it, love it, love it. Appreciate everybody who's here. If I'm missing anybody, my apologies. Blanket thank yous for being here. So before we get into this Dan Radakovich talk, because I know that's what everybody wants to talk about right now, let, let me ask this first. Let me ask this. Is there anybody who did not see the comments from Dan Radakovich? Anybody in the live chat who did not see the, the comments from Dan Radakovich? I'm curious. I want to know if this is going to be a shock to anyone or if this is going to be anyone's first time hearing this. Because it might be that everyone heard it already. We're still going to talk about it. I'll still go over his comments. But I'm just curious if there's anyone who has not heard about it. Where's Joel? He'll, yeah, he'll probably be here. He's fashionably light. He's fashionably light. Just like me. You didn't hear it, Chris? Okay, Christian is Bay didn't hear it. John didn't hear it. Okay, okay. So this this has the fan base up in arms, Chris. This is a huge controversial thing. And we'll get into it here in just a second. I'm going to make you wait a little bit longer. I'm going to make you wait a little bit longer. But it's just because I want to show... I just want to show that they did make an official announcement for the spring game. Now, we knew it was going to be at Cobb Stadium. Uh, we knew the date, but I don't think we knew the time, and we didn't know for sure if it was going to be on television or not. So the spring game is going to be April 13th, that is on a Saturday, at Cobb Stadium, 4 p.m. Eastern time, and it will be on ACC Network. So you will have an opportunity to watch it. It's going to be televised. Obviously, there's not a whole lot of room at Cobb Stadium. This is also controversial uh, because it's it's kind of being turned into this exclusive event for big donors and season ticket holders. But that's another topic for for a different day we could do a deep dive on that as well but there's no changing it it's it's set in stone they've already decided it's a very questionable decision because of the the low amount of seating and the way that you get tickets i personally do not care where the spring game is played it can be played at a high school stadium hard rock whatever stadium you want and insert attendance jokes here because i know that's what some fans florida state fans are going to do in the comments but if it can only seat like 500 people or 800 people, there are going to be more people than that that want to go. So I know they're bringing in extra bleachers, but I don't know what the total is going to be. However, exactly, R. Wilmer, the average fan is going to kind of take this as a, a, a slap to the face. I know, I've said this before, I know people that will travel to South Florida that don't live in the area 
just to go see the spring game, just for a fun little trip. And if they're not a big time, you know, donator or long time season ticket holder, there is a good chance, very high chance, almost guaranteed, they will not get to attend the spring game this year. And I've always said that I personally believe the spring game is an event for the fans. I don't think the spring game is about trying to figure out where guys land on the depth chart. You figure that out in closed scrimmages. Yes, there are some fans there. You can treat it like game day, but it's more so an event for the fans to hype up the fans, to get them excited for the season, to to show them, hey, here's what we've been working on. You can see the guys suit up and it gets everyone pretty excited about the season. With that being said, it doesn't really feel like a fan event when it's exclusive. It literally, look at this guys. It literally even says, I'm going to zoom in. You see this? It literally says exclusive event. Now, I don't know if they're trying to spin this as some kind of marketing thing, but this seems kind of like it would backfire. I don't I don't think spinning this as like an exclusive event is anything cool. I think it's it's a big mistake. I, 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 we can't change it. There, there's nothing we can do about it. It's it's set in stone. It's decided. It is what it is. You can rent bleachers. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you can. Sure can. <laughs> I think. I mean, I if you if you need the number for somebody, I'm I mean, I'm sure I'm sure I could get you some uh, a number. You know. Uh, but official for the spring game, I'll try to have links for uh, the ACC network. Hopefully, I'll be able to get them. But we'll do a live hangout for the game just like we did last year, just like we do every year, and we'll react to the spring game. We also talked about it in one of my spring update videos, but just in case anyone missed it, linebackers coach Derek Nicholson has been upgraded a bit. He is now linebackers coach and co-defensive coordinator. So we need to clap it up for Derek Nicholson. Been here since the 2023 season and being named co-defensive coordinator is a big opportunity for him. And I'm super happy for him. The linebackers love him. Uh, the coaching staff gets along with him well. Just the players overall really like Derek Nicholson. I've heard he's really energetic. Just a good guy, and everybody wants to play for him. Uh, they have to at least do a few things to keep the donors outing money. I mean, you're not wrong. But you make, you make it exclusive for them so they feel extra special, and then they donate even more money. I don't know. What's up, Crip? Yeah, we're trying to get that figured out, Crip. It's a get-to-know-your-team day. Exactly. Like, you go out there, and you see JoJo making some catches. Uh, you go out there and you get to see Travante Citizen running the ball. Like, it's just something. You, you get to see Cam Ward in a Miami Hurricanes jersey. And a lot of times for the spring game, remember, they, they'll do like little meet and greet stuff before or after the scrimmage or after the spring game. And so many people are going to miss out on that. And I, I just I just think it's super unfortunate. I really just think that that's, again, I, I think it's a huge mistake, but... It is what it is. Coop, you watching the NCAA tournament? Not really. Uh, with Miami not being in it, I, I don't watch a ton of basketball. Do have a little bit of money on one specific school to go all the way. And if you ask me enough times, I'll reveal who it is. But I'm kind of embarrassed. I kind of I kind of don't want to mention it. What's up, Bryce? It's good to see you, Bryce. So here we go. Let's go ahead and dive in. I think we got enough people in here. So, Athletic Director Dan Radikov. Let's back up. Let's back up. Let me let me provide some extra context. I'm by no means a lawyer. Don't pretend to be. I don't know a ton about the ins and outs of all these rules with the conferences and college football in general. But I do know that Florida State and Clemson are wanting out of the ACC. And they are now both suing the ACC, but keep in mind that the ACC is counter-suing them. So there's a whole lot of drama going down in the ACC right now because Florida State and Clemson won out. So the contract with the ACC runs until 2036. So it's still about 12 more years from now. Uh, the money to get out is extreme. 
But the ACC is countersuing, saying that the grant of rights is valid and enforceable. So here's where the issue comes in. Here's where the drama starts for Miami. Athletic Director Dan Radakovich appeared on the Joe Rose Show. And he made this statement when asked about all of this ACC stuff that's going down. This is what it takes to wear the U on the side of your helmet. Okay, I'll start. <laughs> Drop a gal! I will sit you atop your throne. Thank you very much for the 305. I appreciate you, Drop a gal. I will sit you atop your throne. And now remember, like I said, I, I am no expert on this. So I'm just relaying some information, what little bit I do know about it. Obviously, I could I could be wrong on a couple of the facts. So correct me if, if you know something that I don't know. Um, but as far as I know, I think I'm talking specifically about the ACC contract. Uh, as far as I know, I think it's 2036, right? Correct me if I'm wrong, but either way, let's set aside how long the contract is and let's just talk about the fact that so many people believe that there's going to be these, these two super conferences, right? That the ACC is going to dissolve and it's not going to be a thing anymore. So you need to get out now while you still can. With that being said, a lot of Canes fans want Miami to exit the ACC because there's there's not as much money as, you know, like you get when you're in the Big Ten or the SEC, for example. And they feel like overall it's just sort of a disadvantage being in the ACC. And if it does, in fact, end up dissolving, if this goes through, if FSU can get out, if Clemson can get out, and then other schools start to follow suit, Canes fans are afraid that Miami will get left behind. ACC deal with ESPN is up in 27 unless renewed. Well, I'm not talking about the ACC deal with ESPN. Those are two separate things, right? Like I'm talking about, let me see. Let me double check. Isn't the... Like I said, correct and correct me for real if I am wrong. I thought that the the media rights deal was until 2036 with Miami. Yeah, so I'm talking about something I'm talking about something different, right? I feel like we're on I feel like we're on two different Two different pages here. The ACC ESPN contract runs through 2027 with an extension that ESPN can unilaterally extend through 2036. The grant of rights is an amendment to the ESPN media deal. Okay, I got you. No one is one of those. No one of those things revealed in the FSU suit is ESPN has the sole authority to extend the grant of rights to 2036. It really expires 2027. They have to make a decision by February 25th. So basically, here's what we're getting at. Let's let's ignore all of the legal mumbo jumbo because we could really we could we could go down a rabbit hole here with this. At the end of the day, what people want is they want Miami to make a move. They want Miami to not get caught sitting on their hands, and they don't want Miami to be showing support for the ACC because everyone should be getting out. Everyone should be bashing the ACC. We want out of here, right? Dan Radakovich comes on the Joe Rose Show, and he says this specifically. Here at UM, we are incredibly solid with the ACC. And this is not the response that a lot of Canes fans thought. Canes fans thought that Radakovich was going to come out and bash the ACC or talk about the fact that Miami is making moves and wants to get out. He goes on after that to say the ACC is still one of the power four conferences that are part of the college football playoffs, a very active and vibrant member of that power four. So Dan Radakovich comes out and he backs up the ACC. 
he comes out and he literally says we're incredibly solid with the ACC we're fine they play a part they're, they're going to be you know uh, playing a part in the college football playoffs Miami and the ACC are Gucci we're good but here's the thing and th- this is just purely my opinion and if you disagree with it it's it's perfectly fine I think that this is a scenario where Dan Radakovich is not an idiot. Hey, sorry, he's he's trying to he's trying to tear up the uh, the uh, the final thoughts couch. Going blank. Dan Radakovich is not a dummy. I believe personally. Tell me if you agree or disagree. This is where I really want to see how you guys feel. It would be stupid for Dan Radakovich to come out on any radio show or any type of interview and throw a middle finger up to the ACC. Because right now, Miami is not actively in a lawsuit with the ACC. So to come out and bash the conference that you are currently playing in when you're not in the middle of a lawsuit is probably a pretty stupid move. I think that Dan Radakovich is not a dumb guy. I think that he's sitting back and he's seeing how this plays out with Florida State and Clemson or anyone else who jumps in. Now, I know the counter argument is, but Coop, we're going to get left behind. What are we going to do if that happens? I think that even if something does go through for Florida State or Clemson, that could potentially provide the blueprint to either get out or it could open up an opportunity for other schools to just get out without having to go through all of these these processes, this long, lengthy legal battle that Florida State and Clemson are probably participating in. Because I believe that and my my opinion carries no weight. I'm just I'm just putting it out there so we can discuss if we agree or disagree. Florida State and Clemson is not going to get out of this without paying some money. They're going to have to pay some money. Could they Could they make it less? They could definitely talk them into less potentially again i'm not a lawyer and i do think that they can break this contract or get out of it in some sort of way there's loopholes and contracts are broken literally every single day it happens all the time but i don't think that it's going to be super quick and they're not going to get away with paying no money to get out of this so don't you think that it would be smarter to come out and just give a this is what it takes. blanket, generic to to political you. response until helmet. you get involved. Can't help but wonder what percent of our fan base would predict a 12 to 0 season if we magically teleported <laughs> into the sect this year. Chris Gaffney! I don't know. I don't know. Let's ask him, Chris. Chris, I'll sit you atop your throne. Thank you for the 499. I appreciate you, Chris. But let me say this. I think that in the long run, Miami should exit the ACC. I think that they should find a way out. Uh, I don't care for the ACC. I don't care for the way that they've treated Miami or a lot of other teams. So I'm in no way supporting the ACC. I put out a tweet earlier today and people said, oh, Coop's Coop's over here sucking off the ACC and he wants to stay in that conference. Not at all. I think that Miami should get out. But I think they should also be smart about it. And I think that right now, They don't want to get tied up in some sort of lengthy legal battle until they see how things start to play out a little bit. So I just thought it was funny that so many Canes fans, and this is where, Chris, I want to see your opinion on this too. I'll just be blunt. that They they were calling Radakovich a pansy, and they were saying he's not standing up for what's right, and he should be backing Florida State and Clemson. He's just taking the generic political response route the coach speak you know if you want if we want to use football terms as he sits back and he waits to watch it evolve a little bit and when the time is right to make a move i do think that they'll try to make a move because right now it's they're gonna they're gonna have to exhaust so many resources into fighting this legal battle and then hopefully what happens is they are successful I'm behind Florida State wanting out and Clemson wanting out. And then 
the other people who didn't want to get their hands dirty and 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 use all their their time and effort into fighting this can hopefully just kind of fall in behind and we just go on our merry way and exit and find another conference. Dan Radakovich is not an idiot. I really don't think that he is. And again, this is what you should expect with his responses. And when people say, nah, 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 Coop, that, that's not how it works. People lie all the time. Or people will say things to the media or for the camera to not stir the pot. And I can, I can think of a hundred different, different examples. But let's take a, a head coach, for example. We'll try to stick with uh, football uh, analogies here. How many times has a head coach at the end of the season came out during an interview and they say, uh, Kentucky, is Kentucky is interested in hiring you. you. There's an open job sorry, there. Are you me. interested at all? Everyone is doing that. He and Jay Bat at GT said good things about the ACC through the football season, but we know how everyone really feels. Exactly. Thank you. Exactly. Zach Jones. Of course they don't like the ACC. They're getting less money than literally everyone else. Who wouldn't be pissed? Thank you, Zach Jones, for the five. I'll sit you atop your throne here in just a moment. And that's exactly the point I'm trying to make. So when, when, when they interview a coach and they say, hey, Kentucky has an opening. They're showing big interest in you. Are you interested? And the head coach says, absolutely not. Uh, this is home. This is where I plan on coaching next year, and I'll be here to support the players. When literally he just got off a plane from interviewing at Kentucky. But he just gives some sort of generic response to the media as to not stir the pot, not get involved, and then you make a move when it's time to make the move. So I, I don't think that Miami is that dumb is what I'm saying, guys. I really, truly don't. I know other fan bases are pointing and, and laughing, but Miami's not stupid. I don't think that Miami will get left behind. I do believe there are conferences that would be interested. And Dan Radakovich even ended that interview with saying this. And don't quote me on this because I don't have this one written down. But Dan Radakovich mentioned that if the Big Ten or SEC came calling – that he would be interested, that Miami would entertain it if they could figure out a way to work out all of the other stuff. But people don't put that in there because that doesn't fit the narrative. All they want to talk about is Dan Radakovich said, Miami Hurricanes are incredibly solid with the ACC. Miami loves the ACC. They want to stay. It's not what they said. It's just that would be taking a lot of the resources and putting them into that basket, trying to fight this legal battle that will probably go on for a long time. And by a long time, I mean it's potentially going to be years. There are people that think that FSU and Clemson will be in a different conference in 2025. I think that's crazy. I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think it will be that early. But that's just my opinion. That's my little spiel. Now let me scroll up and let's see if we're agreeing or disagreeing here. And that's why I didn't want to get too much into the whole okay, this runs to 2026 or 2027, then they can renew with these media rights and then the ESPN thing, and then this goes to 2036 because there's so many loopholes and in, in different angles to look at this thing. I purely really just want to focus on, and we, we could talk about it in the chat, but I really want to focus on just Miami being in the ACC, not wanting to stay in it and wanting to leave, but recognizing that they need to play it a little safe. Let's see what happens. And then they'll make a move when the time is right. But I don't know that for sure. And I'm not going to pretend like I do. I'm just, that's just my personal opinion is all it is. Let me scroll up and catch up though. Let's scroll up. Rad is playing chess, not checkers. I agree. Rad is sitting back and waiting. That's what I think too, Melissa. That's what I think. Now, what will be interesting, Nick brings up a good point. If some other schools start following what Florida State and Clemson is doing. Because I know Dan Radakovich said that he was shocked when Clemson did that. He did not think that they were going to make that move, and they did. So there could be some other schools 
that are going to follow suit and also make this move. Now, if you start having two, three, four more schools start to do this, that's then what we're talking about. Maybe then it is the right time for Miami to make a move. So we'll see. Just don't become like Washington State and Oregon State in the in the pack. Yeah, exactly. In in the pack too. <laughs> I should have did this first, Cypher. <laughs> uh keep in mind Dan was A D at Clemson during their championship runs. This is true. Now you mean that as a as a good thing, right? Could be wrong, but he is not showing his cards. And I think that that's a, a smart move. You don't always want to lay it all out there. I think that that can be kind of a dumb move sometimes, especially um, in that, I guess, world with the kind of politics and things that go down behind the scenes. I think it would be silly sometimes to show all of your cards. Let's see what Briley's got to say. The problem I think most fans have with Dan is that the tide is turning. Florida State suit, Clemson suit, even UNC chairman is talking about the ACC being a losing proposition. And again, I I do think that eventually something happens with all of this, with the ACC maybe dissolving. They're going to fight it. They're going to try to not let that happen. But if we're also being honest here, we don't actually know what's going to happen. Now, the counter argument here is then also, we don't know if Miami might not get left behind as far as What I'm trying to say is they could. Maybe they don't make a move early enough, and they do find themselves in a pretty bad spot. But then you can also argue the other side and say, the tide is turning. The the ACC's done for. It's dead. And then when all this is said and done, it doesn't go down the way that people thought it was going to. we, We just have to recognize that that is a possibility. That could happen. So I don't know. I don't know. What's Katie got to say? Radakovich was AD at Georgia Tech when they were actually good and the Clemson AD during their ascent. He knows what he's doing. Bingo. Again, I, I actually do I do trust this guy with these decisions right now. I really do. FSU and Clemson doing the dirty work right now. Rad isn't an idiot. Miami will move when the time is right. That's what I'm thinking. What's up, Sage? What's up? And I'm loving... I Honestly... I'm just kind of distracted reading your guys' opinions and comments on it. It's going to be a long, dragged-out legal battle. So then let me just ask point blank. Let's make it simple. Do you think Miami is making a mistake by not getting involved right now? Yes or no? Is that a mistake on Miami's part? Because at least out in the open, what we're told And based on what everyone is saying, Miami is not getting involved right now. They're sitting back and watching. Is that a mistake? Yes or no? We we don't know for sure. I'm just curious if you think it is. If you think Miami should be diving head on into this thing. Miami should be tweeting out, hashtag, screw the ACC, middle fingers up, F them. What do you think? Because I think there's going to be some disagreements here. How do we know they aren't involved? We just have to assume they're not just based on the the comments and things. Now, they could very well be making small moves behind the scenes and even preparing things. I don't think, let's say this, and I think that you'll agree, Melissa. I don't think there's any way they're, they're not just ignoring this. Some people think that Miami not getting in the legal battle means they're just completely ignoring this. Hey, uh, You know, some people say just ignore the problem until it goes away. It's not going to work like that. They're not just completely ignoring it. They know what's going down. They know what's at stake. They understand what's going on. He even said himself they're watching it very closely. Of course they're going to keep an eye on it. Florida State, look, as much as we don't like Florida State, well, most of us, they're big in the ACC. Clemson, big in the ACC. If you have schools like North Carolina and some other ones jump in, like we said, some big-time teams. So, yes, they're watching it. They're watching it. But does anyone think there is a world where the ACC doesn't dissolve? I'm just kind of curious about that as well because everyone's focusing on these two power conferences here. Is there a world where the ACC does make it? I don't know. Maybe. 
I don't know. I do think if I had this to make a I prediction, do. I do think the ACC will be gone at some I'm point, but it's going to be a while. Coop, do not let me hear you say anything about sharing a conference with those low life, worthless, lower than a FSU fan, ref buying, buckholes. Bad enough I have to share the Earth's oxygen with them. <laughs> but what if, Chris? What if we shared a conference with them and then we got to beat them on the regular? Like every year. You know what I'm saying? Like, what if that meant that we just got to play them over and over again and just spank that booty? Time and time again. And it would just feel better and better each and every time. I'm just saying. Chris Gaffney. I'll sit you atop your throne, Chris. I appreciate the love. I'm I'm looking out though for your, your comment on this. If you think it's crazy or not. I'm trying to look. I think I, I missed it. Uh, they gain nothing by jumping in now. We just sit back and let Clemson and FSU spend money on lawyers. See, and that's what I tweeted, Chris. And Canes fans are telling me I'm smoking crack. That we're going to get left behind. And that Miami is making a huge mistake by not getting involved in this. And I'm trying to fight this back, but everyone take. thinks I'm just supporting the ACC. Do and I'm you. not. I'm, I'm not supporting the ACC. I could see 2030 being the last year if this goes FSU's and Clemson's way. 2030 is the last year we have for ACC schedules that have been released. Ooh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, I definitely think, I mean, I'm talking bare minimum, Zach Jones, at least two years. And that, in my opinion, is bare minimum. If anything, based on the way it seems like the ACC is approaching this, they actually might be petty with it. Like, I, I think that they would try to draw it out. And I'm actually kind of curious if there would be any awkwardness there. Like they, because they would only lose money. So I don't think they would do something silly like not giving Florida State or Clemson priority at times. Do you see what I'm saying? Like they wouldn't do that, would they? Like kind of just like a little, a little slap in the face. Because that, how does that even work? Like you're still in the ACC but you're suing the ACC because you want out, but they say you can't get out, but you still got to play in the ACC. How does that relationship work? I don't know. That's got to be awkward, right? FSU has burned too many bridges. We're out one way or another, and I do agree with that. I mean, they, they said piss off. We don't want to be here, and that's what Miami does not want to do. Dan Radakovich doesn't want to burn the bridges. He wants to wait and let everyone else do it. And then we'll go from there. Will you open up the phone line? We could maybe end with taking a few phone calls. Sure. This is a revolving door conversation. I agree. It is. But I, I wanted to get a feel for how this specific community feels about all of this. I just wanted to see because I got a ton of pushback on Twitter. And that's okay. That's fine. I'm fine with being in the, the minority for the most part. Notre Dame is a school I wish would get left out. Miami is making a big mistake. Big Ten might let FSU pick their travel partner. Okay. What do we got? The big thing that FSU is accomplishing is demonstrating that the ACC uh, commission granted ESPN that extension without member approval before FSU sued. Oh, before FSU sued, everybody thought the money was like $500 million because it ran through 2036. If that extension is voidable, then the grant of rights is only through 2027, and that makes the money much less. So that's true. Like I said, in no way am I def defending the ACC. Uh, I don't really care for it overall. I've never had ACC pride. This is something that I know Chris and I have disagreed on. Not calling you out, Chris. I'm just saying. When people have said, don't you want ACC representation? And at times, this is selfish of me. And it's probably stupid of me because maybe it does mean more money at times. It probably does. But all I care about is Miami. I really personally don't care about the ACC representation because I've never really cared about the ACC overall. I just haven't. 
Watch the ACC dissolve and Miami ends up in the Big 12, the short bus conference. <laughs> I guess the same lower annual payout. I'd be pissed. I'd be so mad if that happened. Yeah, he's ma he's making his what? He's making his rounds. He's making his rounds. I think FSU and Miami should be working together on this, but Miami is hopefully working behind the scenes. And I think that's a real possibility. I do definitely think that's a, a possibility. Because it is interesting, would this have even happened if Florida State would have gotten into the playoffs? Would they have ever pushed this at all? Easy to explain this relationship. No different than when someone sees a better deal on a cell phone plan, but they are under contract. Good luck getting out. Ooh, okay. Okay. Keep in mind the lawsuit is just over the amount of the exit fees. Even if they lose, they could leave. Yeah, if, if they want to pay the money. Exactly. It's, it's some crazy amount of money. Absolutely wild. But yeah, I do think a lot of teams, once, you know, when you look at the numbers, there are uh, pretty much every team in the ACC has a right to be upset. I think so. They're all kind of getting screwed when it comes to money. FSU has been carrying the ACC in terms of viewership, excluding Clemson, for more than a decade, and that's not probably its facts backed up by data even including the Willie Taggart years. I mean, I can't I can't counter-argue with that. You're not wrong. We were talking about this before the season. We absolutely would have done this without the snub. So I'm guessing the snub just sped it up. Yep, that's what Melissa said. <laughs> the snub just sped it up. I get it. Miami has the luxury of working in the shadows. So why wouldn't you? Like, why wouldn't you? Honestly. Because the thing is, we still don't know how this is all going to end. We really don't. The snub solidified in people's minds that the ACC is a second-tier conference. What would really be interesting would be if the SEC or Big Ten paid the penalty money to the ACC on behalf of Florida State and Clemson to get them out. I wonder... Hmm. Because I, as it stands, I don't think there would be any way that would happen just because of the sheer amount of it. But if they were able to get that lower, that could be a possibility. If they felt like that they could get their money back on having a team like Florida State or Clemson in their conference or whoever else, if it would you know drive the viewership up and sales from other things, I mean... Maybe. That would be very interesting. We sit back, watch FSU and Clemson, and if any additional teams that do the same, we make our exit plan. Yeah. I like it. Miami, in, okay, this is funny, though, I have to say. This is actually pretty funny. Miami ends up in the Pac-3, Oregon State, Washington State, and Miami. Okay, that's, that, that's, that is actually pretty good. That's pretty humorous. I would cry, and I'd be very upset, but it, it would be pretty funny. It would be pretty funny. I still think there could be a world where the ACC doesn't dissolve, though. I still think that that is a possibility. It would be kind of crazy at this point, with especially with everything that's come out, everything that's went on, but I don't know. The last place I want to be is the SEC with the 79 and 80 head coach in that meat grinder. Oh, Katie. Oh. I've told you guys, I would prefer the SEC, but it's just due to location. It'd be so cool to me if Miami was playing Tennessee, Bama, Georgia, South Carolina, all these teams that are in my neck of the woods. That'd be pretty cool. If Miami goes to like the Big Ten... It it would it would severely limit any away games that I could go to. It'd probably be strictly games at Hard Rock for me. Yeah, this was the biggest FSU news day with nonsense in a long time. Yeah, 
it, th that this wasn't even going to be something we discussed in today's stream. So if I seem a little underprepared, I shifted gears like two hours before this stream kicked off. The, the main focus of this stream was going to be talking about spring. We have five practices under our belt, sick number six tomorrow. And we were going to be talking about hype for the season. How much Kool-Aid do you think that you're drinking at this point in spring practice? But then I put that tweet out. I got a ton of pushback from Florida State fans, Miami fans. So I was like, let's at least talk about it. Realignment is the future. True. What's up, Cornelius? So I need to kind of refresh on everything that is going on with it. I just kind of have, I'm just surface level at the moment. I've been keeping up with it a bit, but with these new things that have come out, I need to kind of catch up a little bit, but I wanted to see how everybody was feeling about it. And it's okay. Yeah. Cause at the end of the day, we, I think we all, okay. Let, let me ask this. In the end, if you are a Miami Hurricanes fan in this live chat right now, you want you want Miami out of the ACC ideally, correct? Or are there people here that want Miami to stay in the ACC, assuming it doesn't dissolve? Like, play hypothetical. The ACC sticks around, at least for a little bit. Or in total. I guess what I want to know is just, do you want out of the ACC? Or if it stayed, would you be fine with Miami staying in the ACC? Because me personally, I would want out either way. I don't care. I made a video one time saying I would. I wish that Miami could win the ACC before any type of exit happens. But you don't want to be left behind. Winning the ACC if you know there's only a few teams in it wouldn't feel quite the same. So either way, I think it would be smart for Miami to get out even just for financial reasons. Plus all the other things that come along with it. But I do think that Miami should get out of it eventually. So I'm not a fan of them staying in it. But is there anyone here that, that would want Miami to stay? You want out of the ACC? What else we got? You uh, Penn State close to... Yeah, but SEC would be so much closer though, Wilmer. <laughs> so much closer. What else we got? Bryce wants out of the ACC. We out after 2025. It makes no sense for any Miami fan to not want out of the ACC. I, I agree. I agree, I think. But that's I wanted to see. I'm in the heart of SEC country. Yeah, I'm, I'm half an hour from Neyland Stadium. Staying is the easiest route to the college football playoffs. I mean, hey, you know. If the ACC was like three or four teams, you know, expanded playoffs, you know? Bro is drowning in Mario cool air. Wrong button, wrong button. Yep. The financial disparity is about to be around $50 million per year between um, P2 schools and everybody else when you include media money and college football profit sharing. Just can't... Oh, college football playoff profit sharing. Just can't make up the difference. No, I agree. I agree. And I had some numbers written down, and I literally crossed them out because I'm finding it, there's so much... Um, What would be the word? I'll go I'll go look for this information and I'll find one number, one specific number when it comes to talking dollars about this thing on one website and then find an article that was posted the exact same day and it'll be millions different. So that's why I'm not throwing specific numbers out or anything at the moment because I'm finding conflicting information every time I look at this stuff. So I've got to make sure that I find a solid source. I know I'm throwing the right numbers out there if I'm going to talk numbers. And if, if you can hook me up and let me know where you're getting some of these numbers, I'd appreciate it because I'm finding so much conflicting info. I think the CFP recently said a conference has to have eight teams to get any auto bids. Dang it. Well, there goes that plan. Uh, 
Gosh dang it. There goes that plan. <clears throat> the problem you're going to run into is the ACC is a better basketball conference. And I have to say the basketball team has done more than the football team here in the last 10 years. I mean, they have. They definitely have. Football is the money maker, And I also agree with that. The SEC is better sports-wise for hoops and baseball. Uh, Big Ten better academically. Well said. Yep, I agree. Be back on in a few. We'll be here, Chris. Yeah, and see, that's the only thing, Melissa. That That's what I keep getting, is I keep having people, anytime I mention any of this stuff, they think that, that they put me in the same boat. They say, why don't you want out of the ACC? And I say, no, 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 no. You're you're taking what I'm saying and only listening to part of it and then running with it. Like, I totally want out of the ACC. I just hope that Miami is smart about it. And I think that the approach that they're taking right now is the smartest thing at this current moment. It c continues to evolve. This could be different tomorrow. Like I said, three or four more teams might come out and say, hey, we're suing the ACC. We want out of here. But right now, the approach today that Miami is taking is is the, the safe one, which will make some people upset, but I think it's the smart thing to do at the moment, just personally. This is what it take. Sup, 850 Matthew. What are you on the side of your helmet? Sup, Coop. NC Sup. State is winning March Madness. I bro, that ain't who I put my money on. It can't be them. It can't be them, 850 Matthew. I appreciate the dollar ninety nine. Thank you, my man. I, I put my money on. You guys wanted to know. <sighs> it pains me to say this, but I'm just going to put it out there. I did put a bet on the the champion for all of this. I put my money on North Carolina. Look, when you're betting, you got to use your brain, not your fandom. Miami ain't in it. But I'm also not going to put my money on somebody who has like plus 200 odds because you ain't going to make any money. I put my money on North Carolina. They were at plus 2,000 to win it all. And when I saw that plus 2,000, I put my money on UNC. I sure did. Sure did. What do you think of Radakovich? I think he's a, I think he's a, a, a pretty smart dude. I think that he knows what he's doing. And I like his approach. Maybe it backfires on him. Maybe I look like a big fat idiot a year or two from now. But right now, I like his approach. UNC ain't winning it. Who do you think? Who do you think wins it, Melissa? You pay more attention to basketball than I do. I like to take a long shot with kind of odds, you know, stacked against them. And that's what I like to bet on. There was no way, like UConn, no way I'd put my money on UConn. The reason why I wouldn't put my money on UConn is for one specific reason. Uh, their odds are plus 280. So I'm not saying UConn can't win it, but I'm saying with those odds, there's no way I'm putting my money on them because you'd have to put big boy money on UConn to win money. And Coop don't bet big boy money. So I got to go with a somewhat long shot. Like if we look at it, this 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 stream's going to be all over the place. UConn is sitting at plus 280. There ain't no way. Like, you guys know I bet like $5, $10, $15. I could put $10 on them and win 28 bucks. Ain't worth it, bro. Ain't worth it. But if you take a plus 2,000 UNC and you drop eh, hey, 25 bucks, no 25 bucks on them, that's $500. And hey, what you do is you pray that UNC or whoever you put your money on maybe makes it to the Elite Eight or the final four, and then FanDuel or whoever else you use offers you a payout. They offer you to cash out. And then you take it. I mean, you take it at 250, 300. So I like to take a little bit of a long shot, but who would I actually think would win it? I have no idea. I don't pay enough attention to college basketball to have any idea who wins it. Just don't say Colorado, because if you do, then I'm kicking you out of here. You're banned. Otherwise, uh, you can say whoever. So, 
an uninformed decision from Coop, but I just threw a couple bucks on them, and it, it was a decent, decent payout. Don't they do pretty well, it seems like, every season, Melissa? Or am I thinking of someone else? Who's like the Cinderella right now? Who's the big Cinderella team that people are like, they're probably not doing it, but they're making a run, and then they get knocked off? Who, who's the big Cinderella right now? Oakland? So they're still in it? Oregon is playing good right now. I saw Colorado knocked off Florida. That was kind of crazy. UF lost. We can all laugh at that. None of us like Florida. That's something we can all celebrate. You were more excited to watch women's basketball? That was crazy with Katie Meyer retiring. That's sick, though, that you got the pick and everything with her last year, Melissa. Thank goodness you got that picture, right? Oakland number three was shooting lights out. I'll I'll probably I'll watch a little bit of it just because I got some money in the game now. That's why I like to do a little bet because if I didn't, I would not be watching college football or college basketball. I'll just be real. I wouldn't be watching it, especially without Miami in it. Florida sucks at all the big three sports. Their baseball team is Garbo too, yet top ten somehow with like eight losses. That's it's Florida. It makes me happy to see them suck at everything. You saw a video of Miami fumbling at practice. I saw a tweet from some idiot talking about Miami fumbling at practice. Um, was that your account? That was the other drama from this week. Uh, let me go find it. I bookmarked it so that way I can make fun of this guy later. I don't know if this is a poor trolling attempt. No, 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 no. This is not a poor trolling attempt, and I'll tell you why. Because he backed it up even after people called him out. He literally backed it up after people called him out and he said, no, 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 no. I forgot. I wanted to show you guys this. This guy, Florida Gators fan, by the way, that tells you everything you need to know. He says, them boys can't even hold on to the damn ball. I'm going to play the clip and then tell me what, what you think about this. This guy watches this clip on Twitter and he said, the Miami Hurricanes players can't even hold on to the ball. Let me just show you the video. Does he not realize there's a thing in football? where you practice like fumbling drills, where the idea is the person with the ball is is holding it, you punch it out, and you recover the ball. So they're not going to stop you from stripping the ball. Like they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna hold it pretty tight, but they're you're going to punch it out. It's it's a, it's a literal fumbling drill. And I thought the man was trolling. That's what's funny. I literally thought he was trolling, but he continues to back up his statement underneath this tweet. And it shows you that anybody can tweet anything that they want. And it's why you can't just take everything at face value, everything that you see on the internet. He, look, literally someone said, it's a drill, dummy. And he responded with, what type of drill wants you to fumble intentionally? LOL. I don't know. A fumbling drill. We did this in high school. We did, we, we, yeah, we did this. We did these drills. I don't even think you have to play football to know that, that they're fumbling. Uh, like, it, I got to, it's, it's making my head hurt. I can't. I, I can't. That's a uh, Florida Gators fan for you. Florida Gators fan for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a fumble drill. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, that dude, Rod. That's a fumble drill. Some people are idiots. Most Florida Gator fans are. They were practicing creating fumbles and how to recover. He continues to back up his statement as people roast him under that tweet, and he just kept backing it up and kept backing it up. Yep, exactly, Thomas. Exactly. Was that you, Mike Jones? Was that you posing as a Florida fan? What would Peanut call that drill? 
I don't know. We should call him and ask him. I wonder how DBs practice interceptions. I don't know, Cypher. That's not possible. It's not possible. So anyways, uh, we, 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 we talked about the, the ACC stuff a little bit. You guys know where I stand now. I want out of the ACC. I think that Miami is thinking about it, but they're just watching and waiting. And just know that when you see statements from Dan Radakovich, just my opinion, until they get involved legally, most of his statements are going to be safe, political, generic, just kind of taking the wait and see approach. So he's not going to insult the ACC. He's not going to dive super deep into it. He's just going to play it safe and let these legal battles play out a little bit. And if it seems like it's the right time for Miami to jump in, I do think that they will because they're not dumb. They understand what's going on. And I think that they'll do what they need to do when the time comes. Let's transition over to the other part. I'm I'm not going to even acknowledge that statement, Bradley. I I'm not even I don't even see that. Uh, the other part of the stream and what I wanted to ask you guys, just briefly, I did want to talk about the Kool Aid again, and I know that it gets old. I know it's beating a dead horse, but I'm still seeing this continue to be talked about. And I want to know how much of the Kool-Aid you're drinking right now, if any at all. Are you guys drinking the Kool-Aid? Five spring practices in? I will say this while you think about it. I am still not drinking the Kool-Aid and won't be at any point, no matter what happens. But I will say this. The one thing that I'm I'm sipping on is I do, again, still just believe that Miami makes uh, positive progress this season. I do think they take a step forward. And this time, not so much a baby step, but an actual step forward, as in nine or ten wins. I don't count. Someone was telling me the other day, Coop, you have to say eight, and really it should have even been nine because they played this game close. It should have been nine wins, so you should expect 11. That's not how it works. On the record, Miami won seven. Nine or ten is a step, and I am sipping that Kool-Aid. I am sipping the positive progress step forward this season Kool-Aid. But am I chugging the Kool-Aid? Am I am I believing double-digit wins? Am I believing Cam Ward Heisman, college football playoff run, winning the ACC? We've had this discussion, but I keep seeing people talk about it. And no. I am not. Uh, I, I still think it's going to be some time. Uh, I hope that I'm wrong. Miami kind of had this, you know, perfect storm of bringing in Cam Ward and some other things, but I still believe some of the guys that are going to be the big time game changers are probably still some of the younger guys, which I also know gets tiring. But that's because people continue to hype up these recruiting classes and believe that these guys are always going to come in and be game changers as freshmen. And it just doesn't usually happen. And then in today's age with the transfer portal, if guys don't get playing time year one or year two, then they're transferring out and they're not even here anymore. So there's some of these guys that I really believe could be playmakers, guys like Zaquan Patterson. Uh, who else? I think Nikar could be a game changer, but it's still going to take a little bit of time. It's just unfortunate that if Cam Moore does pan out, if he is the type of quarterback we hope that he's going to be, that we only get him for one year. So that that kind of that kind of sucks a little bit. Coop sips Capri Suns low key. Capri Suns are pretty good. Yeah. That secondary has to have everybody uh, tempering their Kool Aid intake. If not, they're not paying attention. I agree. I agree that Miami has some some big issues, and I think that there are a lot of them that just aren't going to be addressed this season for various different reasons. And I think people are trying to turn a blind eye to that because they want to be hyped and they want to be excited. And again, that that's fine. I don't know why that deleted your message, Randy. Just put it again. I don't know why 
Nightbot tried to to block your message for some reason. <laughs> Don't listen to it, Randy. I have the power over Nightbot. It can't hurt this you. This is what it take. Don't worry, Randy. To where to you on the side of your helmet. I refuse to be disappointed. No cool aid drinking. Yep. I agree. Melissa. Thank you for the dollar ninety nine, Melissa. I agree. I think that's the, the smartest approach. I do. And it is that thing where the reason why I feel the need to continue to address it is because in every spring video, there's always a handful of comments that say that I'm drinking the Kool-Aid, that, that Coop is me, because I'll talk positive about some things that happened at practice. I'll be like, did you see that run by uh, Chris Johnson? Two back-to-back -back breakaway plays. Crazy. And then people will be like, here goes Coop. He's drinking the Kool-Aid. He believes Miami's winning uh, the uh, national championship this season. Uh, I'm literally just telling you some good things that happened at, at spring practice. Miami has some, some very big issues still. Uh, we got to see how Cam Ward actually pans out in a game. We got to hope that the running back room can stay healthy. Parrish left. Parrish had a ton of experience. Hoping that Fletcher will be back in the summer, but what if he re-aggravates the injury? Citizen's been at Miami for several years now and has ran the ball, what, less than five times probably? Something close to that? So he's still got a lot to prove. And then a lot of those other young other guys are younger. Miami has some serious issues at corner. Miami at linebacker, people are hyped and excited, but what if, you've probably heard other people say this, what if Malanoa goes down? We have some other guys that were hyped on, but they still kind of got to prove themselves a bit. So we do this every year where we want to be excited, and it's good. Really, truly, it is. Because we, us Miami fans, we want Miami to do well. But to ignore all those issues, I feel like it's just a, a, a mistake. I feel like that you're going to regret not at least acknowledging them and being a little more realistic in the back of your mind and hoping that you're going to be pleasantly surprised. But again, that's that's always, of course, up to you. I don't know who wants to tackle Cam Davis. <laughs> if the U does not win nine games with the 2025 schedule, I would be pissed if I was a fan. I mean, should win nine. Should win. Yeah, I agree. Coop is definitely not a Kool-Aid guzzler. That's why I come here. Well, I'm glad some people can acknowledge it, Katie. Because I hate that I even have to address it because I feel like the people who say that don't watch the preview videos throughout the season when I predict Miami to lose games all the time. Not because I want to, not because that's fun, but because we try to be honest. You know? Are you still bought in on Mario? Well, to be fair, I kind of have to be this, this, is a, this is a weird answer. I kind of have to be until we get to about five years in, and if he hasn't accomplished anything, then I'm I'm pretty upset. The, the, the thing is here with Mario is as long as he continues to recruit at a high level and we win more games each year, I'm still bought in on him, really. Because that should, over time equal positive progress should again keyword should but you have to remember mario was not my first choice so that's not who i wanted as the number one guy am i bought in though overall um again as long as he doesn't go backwards because something that, that could be really interesting with mario is when you look at all of the previous coaches we've had for the last i don't remember 10 or 15 years I was talking with Chris about this the other day. This is year three for Mario Cristobal. Almost all of the previous coaches that have been fired for the last 10 or 15 years had a really good year three. Or was it two? Let me pull them up. Let me pull them up to make sure that I get this right. Now, it won't work this way for Cristobal, in my opinion, just because they're the, the people higher up in this are just so in on Mario Cristobal. Like, he's, 
He's a Miami guy. This is who they wanted. So they're sold on Mario Cristobal. But what was very a very interesting stat to look at was the wins and losses going from either year two to three or three to four. Let me find that. I was looking at this the other day and I was like, uh-oh. Okay, so tell me, let's see if we can get it up on the screen and tell me what you guys notice about this. Again, I think no matter what, Mario is an exception because, you know, of the contract and 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 how much they have invested in him. But look at something very interesting here. Uh, let's see once we go back to people being fired. So I think it was that year three to four. So one other disclaimer. I understand that there are to there are a lot of different variables at play here. So maybe somebody got fired because it was a combination of a piss poor recruiting class plus their their win loss ratio, or it could be because he was stubborn with this specific part of the game, or whatever it may be. But we're purely just looking at wins and losses here. Randy Shannon continued to improve each year: five wins year one, seven year two. Then he goes nine and four, but then he backpedals in year four. Guess what? He gets fired. Al Golden continues to improve. Year one, six and six. Year two, seven and five. Baby step improves. Year three takes a, a, a bigger step, not a leap, but goes from seven wins to nine wins. He then backpedals in year four and goes six and seven. Then I know that they gave him another year here, but that's where I say it doesn't completely line up. But then he ends this up getting took. fired after a big loss to Clemson. To right? Doesn't even get I'm to finish the season. Hell, From a GT fan, FSU versus GT in Ireland on college game day is big. Huh? FSU wins. Same OL, same OL. GT wins. People will laugh at FSU and see that GT is improving. GT needs to win that to show we can be on a big stage, a.k.a. B-10 or SEC. Yo, Zach Jones. Actually, let's let's do this the right way, my man. Rambling on with Zach Jones. My man. With the big 20. Imagine. <laughs> Imagine. If Georgia Tech were to win that, imagine for a second. Mm. I'm not saying they will. I'm just saying, imagine. What would happen to Florida State's season? If they come out and lose that first game to Georgia Tech, what if Georgia Tech comes out in 2024 and they're legit? Could be, it could get interesting. Zach Jones, I appreciate the big 20, my man. I'll sit you atop your throne with my good friend, Chris. Yeah, I mean, that's that's an interesting one because, again, it's it's so far away. There could be some distractions. That's, uh, hey, hey, man. They have Haynes King. Yeah. I agree. I, I agree that I don't think that Georgia Tech will be a cupcake. Haynes King is pretty dang good. He is. So we'll see. Briley doesn't agree, though, I don't think. I appreciate you, Zach. Thank you, man. So the other thing here, so real quick recap. Randy Shannon, year one, year two, year three, improvement, 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 year four, back pedals. Golden, improvement, 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 back pedals, gets part of a season, gets fired. Mark Rick starts nine and four, ten and three, but then in year three, back pedals. He kind of does the whole retire thing. He was getting sick, you know. Manny, six and seven, improves, back pedals, fired. Going all the way back to 2007. I mean, you could even potentially go back further, but again, there's some different variables here. But 2007, really starting with Randy Shannon, what seems to be the theme is as long as there is some positive progress, even if it's just one extra win, the coach has been able to stick around. 
But as soon as they take a step back and backpedal one season, they get canned. So the pressure will definitely be on Mario if he backpedals at any point. Like if Mario comes out, this sounds so backwards. And uh, people aren't going to like the way that I word this. If Mario comes out, right? Okay, five and seven, seven and six. And then in year three, he wins. Crazy hypothetical here. He wins 11. He goes 11 and one. If then in year four, he goes nine and three. I bet a lot of Canes fans will be calling for his head. Anytime, but even different, I know, again, different things go into this. Mark Rick wanted to step down after he backpedaled, but he was getting a ton of pushback. So it's going to be very interesting. Could Mario set the bar too high for himself? Does that even make sense? Could Mario set the bar too high for himself in year three, backpedal year four, and then lose a massive amount of fan support? Because everyone's going to go into panic mode and say, we're going backwards, not forward. What happened? No, no, no. And the argument is not him getting fired. Mario is going nowhere. But I'm purely just talking about fan support. Would the fans be behind him and support him? Because when Mario went five and seven year one, my comment section was full of people saying, let's fire him and start over. We know that's not going to happen. That go, that I, The reason why I don't mention it is because that's obvious. That goes without saying. He will not be fired. But could he lose fan support? Could, could all the tweets just be bashing him? Could all the forum posts be Mario Cristobal's trash? We hate him. We can't get him out here quick enough. It'll just be kind of an interesting trend to watch. If at, at some point when he backpedals, how much pushback there is. Because Coach is going back almost all the way to 2007 have been fired this is what it takes after they take a step back. To where you on the side of your helmet. Miami will win 10. If not, I got the U and the glue. This is what it takes to where the U on the side of your helmet. GT is top 10 in the country for players retained. FSU has almost a brand new team. It's going to come down to if GT's defense improves. Y'all don't be shocked when that game is close. Woo! Ooh, Zach Jones. Okay, getting that trash talk going early. Bro, I'm here for it. You know there's Florida State fans in here. Come on. Come on. I like it, Zach Jones. I appreciate you, bro. I got to give a shout out also to my man, Joe Davis. Taking over the throne. Joel and Zach Jones coming in. Appreciate y'all. All right, wait. I hit the wrong button for Joel. Hold on, let me find it. Uh, Florida State button. Florida, there it is. There it was. Joel, what's up? Joel, we spent the first uh, probably 45 minutes to hour, first hour of the stream talking about uh, the FSU and Clemson ACC stuff with them wanting out of the ACC in the lawsuit. And then we discussed Dan Radakovich and his statement on the Joe Rose show this morning showing support for the ACC, saying that Miami and the ACC are incredibly solid, that he believes that the ACC is is in a good spot, that it's it's a good conference to be in right now. But we kind of broke it down and discussed what we think that he's really got going on up there. You know what I'm saying? What he's really thinking. And there was a there was there was a lot of disagreeing. There was a lot of back and forth at, at the beginning of the stream for sure. My man Joel, I hope you've been doing well, my friend. I'll sit you atop your throne. I appreciate you, Joel. Now here's the here's the question though. Hold on, hold on. We need specifics here. I think you've mentioned it, but you say I got the you and the glue. So Joel made a bet. He promised me that the Miami Hurricanes would win 10 games this year. And remember, Joel is a Florida State fan. 
This is coming from an FSU guy. And he said, Coop, Miami will win 10. I promise you. I guarantee it. And I said, no, Joe. Nine. Nine games. And he said, no, 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 Coop. Ten. And he said, if they don't, he has that Miami logo that I snuck and, and put on his car. And he says he's going to glue it to himself. I need to know what type of glue, Joel. What type of glue is this? Because it can't be Elmer's glue. That don't count. This needs to be that real crazy stuff. Like, uh, I don't know. We need like plumber's glue. You know that stuff they like put on around the pipes? That might eat eat away at your skin though and get to your insides. That'd probably be pretty bad. I, I, mm, I wouldn't want you to sue me or something over the bet. Uh, maybe Gorilla Glue? The kind that like expands and maybe it would kind of like stick to your skin and make a, a permanent U imprint on like your stomach or your chest, wherever you're going to put it. I don't know. I need specifics. That's all I'm saying. I need, I need to know what kind of glue this is. And I would not be surprised if it could be a close game, Zach. Again, neutral environment, super far away. Lots of distractions. Uh, Georgia Tech returning Haynes King and some other guys. I, they they might be a team you don't want to mess with. You never know. I I'm not gonna lie. I would I would find that quite funny. I would. My man traveling fools with the 28 months. Yo. Oh, actually, as he said, yo 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 yo. I appreciate the love, man. How you doing? Mario is our Ron Zook. Should have hired Kiffin. Yep. And you know that's how I feel, Katie. I I was all aboard the lane train. I sure was. I'd still possibly take him. If anything ever happens with Mario, like, you know, five, five plus years down the road from now, I'd still take Lane Kiffin. My wife tells me I'm crazy. I'd still take Lane Kiffin. I sure would. Kiffin is named in every search at this point. He would come to Miami. 100% Kiffin would come to Miami. And there's no way you can convince me otherwise. I think he would pack his bags. While at Ole Miss anyways. And he, he would be on the first flight down to Miami. The Ibis is called the Florida Chicken by us natives. Coop trying to give my man a chemical burn. It, if, if we're going to do a bet, look, he can't just Elmer's glue a U to his, his stomach. That ain't gonna that ain't gonna work. JB Weld? That might that might work. Epoxy? What's he got to say? Let's see what let's see what he's got to say. I'm gonna let the robot lady read this out. FSU was targeting Kiffin too if Norvell left. I mean, if you want some quick, immediate success, I think that you can get that with him. To where do you on the side of your helmet? I have Miami glue. It always melts under pressure. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this has been a great stream. Uh, I would like to ask that uh, any unnecessary Miami Hurricanes jokes that are definitely not funny be left out of uh, this stream. Thank you. <laughs> hey, Joel, I appreciate you, man. Not this year, Joel. This year's different. This Joel, 
It's the, this is the year this year. This year. Joel, this is the year. This season. I, I didn't say that the year before, the year before that, or the year before that, or the year before that. Definitely not the year before that. Or the year before that. Or the year before that. The one before that, nope. Before that, uh-uh. There was a year before that, nope. Th this this year. This year, Joel. <laughs> Joel! I appreciate it, man. Okay. All right. We shook on it, so there's no there's no going back. There's no going back, Joel. It's it's a win win for me. That's why it's it, I think it's kind of wild. It's a win win for me. Miami gets double digit wins. If they don't, I end up being correct. Plus, you have to glue a U to you, yourself. So it's a win win. If I'm wrong, it means Miami won more games than I thought they would. So fantastic deal for me. Yeah, yeah. O over the next two years, I could see it. Good joke. Good joke. Uh, Kiffin would go to Miami. He didn't resign at Ole Miss until Mario was hired. Kiffin has mentioned multiple times he would like to go back to Florida. I'd hate to see him wind up at FSU. I'd be terrified if Lane Kiffin went to Florida State. Yep, I sure would. Because I think, it's why I said before, I think that it would be huge if someone came in, even if they only stayed for a couple of years, because that was always the argument with Kiffin, right? If someone came in and, and won the conference in, in year one or year two, I think that it would boost up the fan support so much, so quickly, even if you want to count bandwagon fans coming in, which can be annoying at times. But financially speaking, that side of things, it would provide a huge boost. So that's why I always kind of mention that. Like People don't want this slow buildup, this slow grind that we're seeing with Mario Cristobal. That long term, the plan looks pretty solid especially if he continues to recruit you know, at this level. He's always going to have the game day blunders. You just have to factor that in with Mario. But if he gets the right surrounding cast, good OC, good DC, they're in sync, they get along with the position coaches, the chemistry's there. Long term, the outlook looks promising. That doesn't mean anything at the end of the day, but it looks promising on paper. But people don't want that. It's 2024. There's the transfer portal. There, there are teams that are, are having instant success, and Miami fans have waited 20 years, 20-plus 20 years. So they want to win now. So I just always felt like injecting some instant success, even if it was only temporarily, even if there was some fall-off a little bit after that, some people say that might not be worth it, but I think that the amount of hype that it would create in the fan support and the money side of things, I think that it would have been... I think it would have been helpful. However, as long as you know what you're getting into with the process that we're going through right now, then it is what it is, and and you just you got to accept it. Like it, it's fine. Set the bar high, hold them accountable. But that is going to be what the the approach is here. It's just how it's going to work. We, we're already seeing it. Five and seven, seven and five. There's no way to, to argue against it. It's, it's what we're seeing. Uh, what's up, Kane's Football Talk? Just joining in. We're almost to the small talk. Almost. I'd rather Kiffin go to Miami over Florida. Really? Interesting. I would be terrified, too. It means we lost Norvell. What's up, Hurricane Patriot? Hey, I saw you jump in the stream, Jake. You're going to start a dynasty league for the community for the new EA college football game? We'll do something for sure. We'll definitely do something. Don't forget the fan support and all the bandwagons we gained Mark Rick's 10-win season. Yet, yeah, all of a sudden, Miami fans were everywhere, Smurfed. Right? Double-digit wins. We're going to play uh, in the conference championship. Miami fans I had had never seen before just started popping up. And they weren't new young fans. They were people in their 30s, 40s, 50s I had never heard from before. And then there were all of a sudden a ton of Canes fans. But again, the amount of support that you get from that, 
they're going to welcome that. It's good. So that's why I always kind of argued that. Uh, one, this year is key to that slow grind, though. If there isn't proof this year, the portal will diminish some of the recruiting success of the last two cycles. Got to have nine wins or better. Oh, I, I agree a thousand percent, Briley. I definitely agree with that. If that if Miami comes out this season and and they get Cam Ward, they've had you know this will be his his second like full recruiting class. Some people say the first one don't count because he had limited time, but second full good recruiting class rankings wise. You bring in Cam Ward, second year under Dawson, second year under Gidry, you definitely do have to see that that progression. You do have to see it. Again, that's the thing. You just you got to see the positive progress. You got to see the positive progress. As long as we're doing that, that's why I keep saying, I'll be a little upset, but I'm not pissed. Just keep moving forward. Just don't go backwards. Don't go backwards. Cam Ward going to have more turnovers than TVD. If Cam Ward has more turnovers than TVD, then, uh, yeah, we'd be in trouble. We'd be in big trouble. I hate you, Nightbot. Nightbot was going to put you in jail, Randy. Besides FSU and maybe a Duke trap, Mario better not lose to Manny. We talked about this, Joel. Who are you suggesting beats Miami minus injuries? It's just... I know that it, it's a bad argument, Joel, but I just... I, I don't know. It, it, it's impossible for me to confidently say... Miami has a guaranteed win really against any other ACC team. I can't even, like, I make jokes, but I can't even guarantee a win against Florida. We talked about how much we dislike Florida, right, Joel? We talked about Billy Napier and how we think maybe he's missing a few, you know, uh, a, 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 few, a few things up here, up top. But I still just can't guarantee it. At the Swamp, game one, I don't know. I don't know, man. So we duck Clemson. We don't have to worry about UNC because apparently Mac Brown is our daddy. I don't know. It, it's tough for me to say. It's just it's impossible as a Canes fan to feel super confident, in my opinion, in any particular game. Like, I don't know. Like, I, I don't feel like Cal is that great. But we got to travel to Cal. I'm going to be nervous if I'm being real. I don't want to believe that that Manny Diaz in year one at Duke can come to Hard Rock and beat us, especially if he plays a young Malik Murphy. But I don't know. I can't say never. You know? So that's my problem. Like... Like if I had to, if I had to be real, Joel, like like if, because what exactly was the 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 question again? Here we got streamception. Your question was, besides FSU and maybe a Duke trap, who are you suggesting beats Miami minus injury? So we assume we're healthy. I have nine, ten. So I, I would be saying three losses then, right? Uh, see, it, same thing. It, it, we want to argue Florida State. Played within seven last year. Like Miami should make this a good game, right? It could be a blowout either way. I don't know. So, I mean, no matter what, Florida State would always be a question mark. Even though people don't want to talk about the game that way since it's a rivalry game. But it would always be a question mark. I would never guarantee a win over Florida State. I just wouldn't be able to do it. And that's not even giving y'all props. I just can't guarantee a win against a rival. So Florida State would be a question mark. Louisville would be a question mark. Year two for Jeff Brom, the, the transfer portal madman. I would still put it as a, a question mark. Not saying Miami's going to lose. Don't get it twisted. I'm just saying it would be a question mark. Uh, Florida, like I said, I, I can't guarantee it. I, you just never freaking know. That's three right there. We should get revenge on Georgia Tech. 
It's in Georgia. Haynes King is pretty good. You said minus injuries, which I, I know we're not wanting to take into account, but how do Miami's corners and stuff look in, in November? So that's potential four question marks, but it, it's March. It's March. So it's just it's impossible to say. It's impossible to say, which is why it's a prediction, which is why it's for fun. But there's just no way. How often does Miami win double-digit games in the season? And we have multiple buys. That's an excellent point. So again, not being negative. It's just how often... Like, Look, we were just looking at the screen. Look at this. I'll, I'll pull up the history. We were just looking at it. And I know you, you can't only look at the past. Coop, get with the times. It's 2024. You can't just focus on the past. But we do have to at least take it into account because historically speaking, this is how Miami operates. So let's get start at 2004 then because we've got 12 and 0, 12, you know, the, the early 2000s. Nine wins. Nine wins. Seven. Five. Seven. Nine. Seven. Six, seven, nine, six, eight, nine, oh, ten. The, the, the magical Mark Rick year. Seven, six, eight, seven. So, of course, I'm super hesitant to jump into that double digit wins because it's happened once since one other time since 2003. That's 20 years. That's 20 years with two bye weeks starting off the season against an SEC team, the Gators, at the Swamp. In the era of the transfer portal against someone like Jeff Braun with Louisville, could Virginia Tech be a sleeper? Could Haynes King come out and sling it at home for Georgia Tech? The Florida State showdown. Whoo, buddy. It's, just, it's tough, man, but I'm hoping. I'm hoping the Cam Ward factor, the year two with Dawson, hopefully the tight ends stay healthy. Hopefully Arroyo's got some certified hands. Maybe, hey, Corey mentioned Elijah Lofton. Maybe the maybe the tight end fullback hybrid comes out in specific packages and, and makes some plays for us. You know, again, anything could happen. I try to not say never. I try to not say impossible. But it's just that jump from 9 to 10 feels like uh, the Grand Canyon for me. It's just one more win. But boy, that gap, the difference. You, you can talk me into 9 all day looking at our schedule. You can talk me into 9 all day. But if, you, if you're trying to get me to, to say 10... I don't think I can do it. Right now. Keyword right now in March. Because <laughs> once the season gets here, we go week by week. Pe people always say, well, how come you even do the, why do you even do the full season prediction if you're just going to go game by game? It's two separate things. And what we do is we compare and we see which was closer. Because believe it or not, there have been seasons where my prediction in June, full season, ended up doing better than my game-by-game -game predictions each week. Like at the end of the day, like total wins versus losses and predictions. And you said we had an easy schedule, Coop? We do! We do! That's what's wild! We have what look, what appears to be a crazy easy schedule on paper. On paper, though. Once those games start getting played, mm, well, we'll find out. Gators are bleeding in so many areas. I, I do believe that the Gators are, are pretty bad. But, hey, man, I don't know. They it, Sometimes teams just show up and show out. They get up for a specific game and, and they shock people. 
The Miami defense isn't going to be as good as last year, and they weren't great last year. Don't get me wrong, I've got Miami at 9-3, and three, but 8-4 and four is just one Mario special away. And I hate to agree with you, Briley, but you're not wrong. You're not wrong. Could Chase and Brown play some uh, edge? It's very possible. It is possible. I know that they've talked about it. Uh, it's it's going to be really interesting to see that that D line rotation, Corey. It's going to be really interesting to see because they're they're trying to figure out. They're doing a ton of experimenting right now and doing some cross training as you would expect in spring. It's going to be real interesting to see how that turns out. Ten and two regular season ACC championship loss, but wins bowl game eleven and three best case scenario worst case nine and four with a bowl win. Now, I'll be honest, straight street, I would be okay with both of those. Notice I didn't say that I would I would I would say that notice I didn't say happy. But would I be okay with it? You already know how I feel. Positive progress, I'm fine. Not happy, but I'm fine. The Gators might be bad, but understand they're going to be ready. Don't get it twisted. I agree, Chris. I'm going to clown them. I'm going to give them a hard time. But they'll be ready to play in the swamp. They will be. If Coop came out here and said 11 wins, y'all would clown him. Coop is in a lose-lose. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you. Because you're right. <laughs> if I came out... If I came out and said 11 and 1 or 12 and 0, people would ask me what I, what's they'd be like, "Coop, we have to know what's in the cup immediately cuz I want some of that." Last year when I said 7 and 5, I told you I've got the receipts. I got lucky with that. I'm not pretending like I hey, I'd be I'd be I wouldn't be doing this for a living if I was that good at predictions. I'd be retired and on a private island right now. I got pretty lucky with that. But I got told how stupid I was for thinking Miami could only win seven. I only bring that up just to say that you're right. I get pushed back regardless. So yeah, it'll happen no matter what. There's no way Cam Ward is only better than two wins last year, eight and four a knee away, but see, it doesn't matter though. Here's the thing. Trust me. I, we all throw that out there. I do the same thing, Drew. Should have been eight and four. The problem is you can say should have. There are should haves in every single game. So at the end of the day, we still lost it. I know we had technically won it. But I can go back to every game and say if 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 that throw, if, if TVD would have hit that throw in stride and we scored a touchdown, that game could have been different. Or if if on that, if we would have converted that that fourth and in inches, that game could have been different. So no matter what. Even though it should have been eight, it was only seven. So since it was technically seven officially, nine wins is still some positive progress. Would I hope it would be more? Sure. Cam Ward, I they're saying Cam Ward is everything they wanted him to be. No full contact yet. Just just had the first practice in full pads. But he is still just one player. One of the most important players on the field, in my opinion, the quarterback, the general, the commander of the offense. But there's just so many things that that factor into that. So trust me, I agree that, again, expectations high. That makes a lot of sense. He was the number one uh, transfer portal quarterback that everyone wanted. He's got to be a game changer. So I do get your side of the argument. But there's no way that I can come out again and just guarantee 10. you got to factor in Mario Cristobal, time management. You have to think about the possibility of injuries because they're bound to happen. It's it's football. It's super physical. And just the, the human variable all, all around. Mistakes will be made. Cam Ward is going to fumble at some point. He's going to throw an interception. And people are going to get out their, their pitchforks and torches. But it will happen at some point. If you make a Florida diss track, we are making a Florida diss track. Like, it, it will happen. 100% it will happen. 
Trust me. Oh, we talking about uh, Lou Cristobal. We're talking about Lou Cristobal, huh? Lou ain't starting. McCoy's been at right tackle with Mauanoa out. True. Once he's back, McCoy to left, car, left guard battling Pancake. Okay. There are young guys who should be repping with the ones if Lou wasn't looking at playtime. He's rotational at worst. I get the injuries, but he's definitely not a depth piece with this kind of burn. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be an interesting thing to watch. I, I hope that there is no playing favorites because there's family there. They talk about the experience that, that, that Lou Cristobal has. I think there is the possibility. I think there's a possibility that Cristobal comes out as the starter game one, but then gets jumped at some point in the season. But I don't know. I don't know. That's tough to say because again, now once we get deeper into spring practice and the pads are on and it's full contact and they do some scrimmages and things, that will that will say a lot. So that's why I'm saying I don't know yet. I would I wouldn't actually come out and bet on it. You'll place money on it. See, I I would not bet right now. There's no way I would put a bet on it right now. I would want to wait and see how some scrimmages play out and we get deeper into spring. Nope. There's no way I would bet on it right now. Nope. <laughs> because at the end of the day, I believe guys like Oak and Lola are better. I also see a world where he has to prove it first. Mario Cristobal really, really favors experience and we've seen it. So there could be a world, but we'll see. We'll see. I I really don't know about with Mario with the the game management stuff, Drew. I don't know. I I I've started to just factor in that there will be at least one game where that plays a major part in the loss or in in the game just in general. Some something with 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 clock management, wasting timeouts, saving timeouts. I just factor it in, and I I don't know. I have no idea. And if, if he's the right guy, it's still too early to say. I know that he will be the guy that's here for quite some time, though. I can guarantee that no matter what happens. Yeah, he gets the five timeouts against Florida. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Mm hmm Oh, you know it'll happen. Mark my words. Clip this and save it for later. And Randy nailed it. The first interception that Cam Ward throws, the Miami Hurricanes fan base will absolutely lose it on Twitter. One interception is all it will take. You know he's going to throw multiple. He's going to throw five, six, seven, eight. I'm sorry, it's going to happen. He throws that first pick. Everyone's going to put up a comparison of him and Tyler Van Dyke and both of them throwing an interception and say that it looks similar, and they're going to say we got Tyler Van Dyke 2.0. You can take it to the bank. 100% that will happen. The very first interception that Cam Ward throws. <laughs> or the fumble. The fumble might be it, just because of the, the sheer amount of fumbles he had coming into Miami. That's a good point. That's a really good point. 9-3 and three is a good prediction. People are saying that I'm playing it safe, and, and I'm riding the fence. I'm not. That's just that's just my real prediction. Just like the the seven wins was my real prediction. That wasn't me being negative. Nine is not me riding the fence. That's my real prediction right now. Not sold on Carpenter yet. We'll see. Fair. Everyone just looks at the size. What about the other guy that we brought in from that island? What was his name again? I can never say it. He transferred though. It was going to be he for, he was going to go to Michigan. And then he came to Miami, and he never even saw any playing time. Size alone is not enough. No, not Marquette. The guy that this left. What it the guy that left, Melissa. To where do you? On what was his name? Head. Nobody knows. As I see it right now, here's my OL from left to right. Rivers, McCoy, Carpenter, Cooper, Maui, Goa. I think that in the end, at Archipong, that's him. Yeah, and I don't even think that's how you say it. But yeah. People, I, I did it too. I did it too. 
because um, people were like, look at this guy's size. Like this guy, if they, if, if they can get him, you know, adjusted to the college level playing football, because he didn't even have a lot of experience playing football. So they said he was an, a, an experiment type. But the size alone wasn't enough to earn him any snaps. And that's where it's unfortunate. People looked at Tyler Harrell on pro day. And what did he run? Like a 4-2-7? And people were saying, yo, why didn't Mario Cristobal put Tyler Harrell on the field? The dude runs a 4-2. He could take the top off of a defense, put him out there. Speed alone is not enough. Height alone is not enough. Everyone talks about Bell and Carpenter and some of those guys. Like, you got to see it. You got to put it all together. That that one trait, that one thing is, is not enough. And he was the perfect example of it. The guy that we got from, that came over uh, instead of going to Michigan. Melissa, I appreciate the 499. And I actually do agree with that. At some point during the season, that I do think that will be it. Rivers, McCoy, Carpenter, Cooper, and Malinoa. That's honestly, uh, I'm happy with that, that O-line. And I do think that that makes a ton of sense. Definitely. Appreciate the 499, Melissa. Firefighter Kane, what's up? He says, what's up, Coop? What's up, hoodie girl? Good to see you in here, bro. Thank you for not adding Lou Cristobal to your starting five. I hate to seem like I'm just throwing shade, but... I don't think there's a Miami fan out there that wants Lou Cristobal starting on the offensive line. I think everyone feels like we've saw what we need to see. Let that man go. Let that man go. Uh, is Joel really Alex Dono? Uh, <laughs> oh, because of the positivity. Yeah, Dono. Uh, I, I love Dono. I've been on Dono's show. I've met Dono in real life multiple times. Dono is a really good guy. But Dono is definitely on the... Um, what's the word? Tread carefully here, Coop. It's not a shot. Dono's uh, uh, pretty much all positive. But there, there is... There is that's also just kind of how he is. Dono's an upbeat, positive guy. Nothing wrong with that. But there, there, there's one other reason why I think he's a little more like that. And and that's probably because he's part of the locked on network. So again, if you're if you're gonna if you're gonna get the media credentials, there's gonna be a certain way you have to approach things when you talk about them. Like, let's just be honest for a second. Do you think that that Alex Dono being in the locked on network, do you think they would approve of him doing a live stream? from a garbage can because Miami is playing poorly. Probably not. Now, like I said, that's no shot. I'm just putting it out there because like I said, I've had these discussions with some of these places that say, we'll get you the, we'll get you the, the credentials. You can go view practice. And they said, but when talking about Mario Cristobal, you can be critical, but you can't be negative especially overly negative. So like I said, I told you guys, I would you couldn't do diss tracks. Uh, I wouldn't be allowed to take phone calls anymore because that opens it up to, it could be unsafe for the channel and the brand because someone could hop on the phone and say something that they're, they shouldn't say. So that's all I'm saying. It's not a shot. I just mean because people were laughing. Who is Alex? Uh, he covers the Canes as well. Locked on Canes. Great guy. Awesome channel. Super good dude. But a lot of people say that he's super positive and, and, and only talks about the good things. I've heard him be critical at times. I've heard him talk about some bad things. But it's just when, when you're part of, you know, the media and, and a network and things like that, again, you have to be careful with how you say things. But Alex Dono is, is, is a great dude. I don't mean that towards him in any way. I just mean... They want you to be respectful, and that's understandable. I, I totally get it. I just, if, if they're doing bad, I'm wheeling the garbage can in here. I'm sorry. It's just the, the garbage can's coming. It is it is what it is. I, I have to let it out. I If I didn't, I would go crazy. I have to let it out. 
Is Katie going to the Doke takeover? Good question, Joel. Katie, are you going to go? We're taking over Doke Campbell Stadium in 2025. There's going to be more Canes fans in there than Florida State fans. Coop, I've covered the men's team, hoops team all season and worked for a network. I was honest. Most of them won't let you be. They might be okay with it, but I can tell you that most of them are not okay with it. <laughs> you cuss on your show all the time. Because I talked to two different places when I was several years into starting this channel. And they, they were decent sized. And th there were very strict guidelines on, on what I could say. But some of them might be a little more lenient. Might be okay with it. You're going to the takeover? Let's go, bro. It's going to be fun. You could be critical. You just can't be like Coop. That's 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 probably in a, cr a contract somewhere. Yeah, freedom of, I need my freedom of speech. I need I need to be able to 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 speak my mind. Real quick, speaking of speaking my mind, let me text Lance Leggett real quick. Give me a second. Hold on. Hold on a second. I I, I gotta I need to talk to him. Because I've been I've been seeing some more stuff being said on social media about me ducking him. And if if we gotta hash it out on stream, then then we'll do it. Hold on just a second. He's probably going to ignore me. He's probably blocked me. Let's see. Let's give him a second. You missed the trash can. I really expected it after Georgia Tech and didn't get it. I hope that you never see it again. Honestly. Reese QB 25. Uh, now, there's somebody in here that's going to disagree with you, Firefighter Kane. They believe that, that Poff is going to transfer out after spring. Come on, that person's in here. I don't think there's I don't think that Poff transfers in here, plays spring, and then transfers out. I think that I think that's crazy talk. Well, let's see, let's see. What's up, Jenny? I'm waiting. I'm waiting to see if he speaks up. I'm wearing the Coach Coop trash trash can shirt. Got some crazy looks today. Are you really? You didn't really get the trash can coop tea, did you, Joel? He says, okay, I text Lance and said, yo, I need to call you real quick. And he said, I'm up, but I'm driving. He ain't got Bluetooth? In that, that fancy car of his? Hmm. Lance is ducking me again, y'all. What should I say back to him? He's, he's ducking me again. He won't race me. He ducks out of a 40-yard dash two years in a row... And then I try to call him to put him on the spot and ask him what's up with these rumors about me ducking him. And he says he can't he can't he can't answer the phone. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. You still got it? 
You, Man, you, have, you have all you the fucking light it up? if you need you to. Want, you want to light it up? I will. I will. Wait. It's, Wait, it, you want to light it up? it's been a long time coming, bro. Like, I think, I don't know what you guys think in the comment section. How, what, how old are you, Lance? Me? 37. Shoot. I'm, I'm a young whippersnapper, bro. I'm 33. I'm in my prime. I'm mad cool. I'm a, bro, I'm a smoke. I smoke you, bro. You only show up for bets? Let's make a bet. I'm going to call you right now. Lance, I'm going to call you right now. Hold on. I'm going I'm to call you right now, bro. Hmm. Pick up the phone. It wasn't it wasn't hyped up enough last year for me to show. Oh. I could, I already knew I was gonna beat you. You know, I was gonna beat you, Coop. Why? You why do I? Bet, so Coop, why? This why do I feel I like? Bet, Coop. Coop, I, yeah. You've been training, I mean, haven't you? Coop. Is that your dad in the background <laughs> laughing? Yeah. Put him on the phone. Put him on the phone. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, is this Lance Lance like his dad? Yeah. Yo, how you, who who you think uh, would win in a forty yard dash, Coop or your son Lance? Unbiased hey. opinion. Hey, hey, hey! I believe you win, <laughs> Woo! bro. I, I bet you go about, you hey. go ten yards into that thing, and you're like, "Oh, Coop, bro, I ain't ran it so <laughs> long, man." Why is he ducking me so hard? I don't get it. You're wearing that shirt as we speak, really? <laughs> That's crazy, Joel. That's wild. That's so dang funny. <laughs> That's my personal favorite, even though it's bad memory. You gonna run the forty like Cat Williams? I that'd be enough to beat Lance Leggett. I know that. I'm ready for him, man. I did all that all that training for nothing. The mainstream pods are pumping too much sunshine up Poff. Jakari will be odd man out. If JB leaves, I hope he heads for SMU and Lashley. That'd be that'd be a pretty wild combo. Coop, Dono, Coach Hayes, uh, Streeter, Chris, Hoodie Girl, Chalupa, uh, Gary and Matt. NMD! I like seeing NMD on there. Marcus Benjamin, Zoe, etc. We got the best team in the world. I love it, bro. I, I I support I support all the the Canes content creators, man, all of them. I'm trying to see if uh, I've already beat Lance twice. I'm two and zero. Oh. I'm trying to see if he'll answer me right quick. Please have uh, someone time and record your training for uh, running the forty. All I'm worried about is beating Lance Leggett, and apparently it's not going to take much. He guys, he won't. He won't. He said he can't. He said he can't talk right now. Hold on, hold on, one more thing. <laughs> Let's make Lou Cristobal shirts. I'm waiting to see if he pops in here. SMU does not need to get any better this year. I agree. They're in the ACC now. Let's not do that. That's a good point. Let's let's not do that. I need to channel some of that trash can shirt creativity. I'm going to be making a hoodie line with about the fans. That's true. I can't wait to see it. I'll rock it. I'll rock a hoodie girl hoodie. You can't beat Cat Williams in the 40? How fast is Cat Williams 40 time? It can't be that good. He's scared to take you on in your stadium. I tried. I tried Canesware parking lot. I tried Hard Rock parking lot. I offered to go up to where, where's? I think he's in Polk County. I was like, "Hey, bro, I don't. Uh, we'll set up the cones in your backyard, your driveway. I don't care. Come to Tennessee. It's pretty good. Check the vid. Is it actually?" Yeah, he's not going to answer me. He ain't going to answer me, guys. I said, they said you're ducking me. And he said, LOL, damn. That's it. That's all he said. 
That's wild, bro. That's wild. What a shame. Former Miami Hurricanes wide receiver, Lance Leggett, even went to the NFL for a bit. Won't race YouTuber Coach Coop in a 40-yard dash. That's, that's embarrassing right there. Dang. This is what it take to wear the U on the side of your helmet. I tried, y'all. Co-op has already beat Lance in a race twice. Back-to-back -back champion. I don't like to brag, but the truth is the truth. Melissa, thank you for the dollar ninety-nine. <laughs> I can't believe he won't even jump on a phone call. He's he. It's gotten to the point to where he's that scared at this point. And I'm not even trying to trash him. He literally won't even jump on a phone call. Dang. Dang. Sorry about that, Joe. He was Miami merch everything every day. He probably would have liked some of those we have on the merch store. The real question is, can you beat Max in the 40? Absolutely not. I I, I think that Max probably runs like a, a, a... He might run like a three flat. He might run like a three or a three five 40. Right now, though, he's catching up on some, uh, on some Z's. Always close by. Look at that. Snoozing. Do you know how funny it's going to be if he actually predicts the the Miami games better than I do this season. That's going to be super embarrassing. If that's really what Cat Williams ran, that that is impressive. Like, real talk. That's pretty impressive. Where's Carl? So, unfortunately, Carl disappeared probably about a month ago. We don't know what happened to him. There's no trace of him anywhere. And he just disappeared. He just stopped coming around. We were still feeding him. Our neighbors were still feeding him. He just up and disappeared. Now, he was a stray cat. He kind of just showed up one day. You guys saw him in the video. And we didn't get rid of him. We, we didn't haul him off. We didn't call animal control. Uh, we were playing with him. We bought him toys. We literally bought him. A new, a fresh bag of cat food, and then the next day he just disappeared. We got George in the building. George, how's that Florida game gonna look? Hey, if you think football is effed up, you should check out the basketball games. We're in no man's land. <laughs> Hold on. This is what it take to wear the U on the side of your helmet. Co-op, you are sexy, bro. Nah, let me stop winking face. Dang. I didn't know Colorado had a basketball team. Mm. I hope you didn't have any money on them, George. That's rough. Man, Dion's even got the basketball team popping off. Oh, <laughs> uh, what if Colorado made a run? Are they still in it now? Like, when was that game? I didn't even look at the date. They're still in it, right? Who do they play next? They play Marquette? Ooh, ooh. I don't know. That game was three hours ago. Dang, that's wild. Yeah, yeah. I try to just pretend like that didn't happen, Melissa. I don't know what game you're talking about. What's up, William? I guess that's honestly about it. I, I was going to end the stream with, with putting Lance on the spot since 
since some of you said that he called me out and said that I ducked him. So I was going to get him on the phone to wrap this thing up and end with a bang, but instead he ducked me for the third time. So... He's calling me. Uh, hold on. Hold the phone. He's calling me. Hold on. Bro, all right. Never mind. Let's get him on the line. Let's call him right now. Let's call Lance Leggett right now. Here we go. Let me call him. If you guys don't know the history around this, just put something in, in the chat, and people will fill you in. But this is former Miami Hurricanes wide receiver Lance Leggett. And uh, for some reason, he is terrified to race me. And he called me out, and I set it up, and he has no-showed two years in a row. I'm going to call him. Hey, cool. Yo, Lance, what's good? Man, cool, man. What's up, man? I'm driving right now. Oh, uh, yo, I, hey, I, I won't keep you long. I just had a quick question. Oh. There, there's hey, this is you what they tell me. Hey, cool, cool. Where are you? On the side of your helmet. You Treats for Maxwell and Taco cool. Bell for your hey, ass winking face. Ass too, while I'm driving. I'm getting twisty, cool. Your ass scared me, cool. Bo, hey, listen. Hey, Hurricane Nation. Hey, Hurricane Nation. He's scared me, y'all. How? Hey, y'all want that race? Tell me this, how come I, I have people telling me in my live chat that you told them that I duck you? Man, cool, you be ducking that smoke, cool. Bro, cool. I, hey, Lance, cool. I was there. Hey, cool, you scared of me like you scared to take off that hat, cool. Bro, cool. you're talking nonsense. I, I was literally there. I was literally hey. there. I had I had my racing shoes on, laced up. Ready to go. I had cones. I had finish line tape. I had confetti cannons. Oh, everything, bro. <laughs> and you, I mean, I, I'll, bro, I'll run it in the Canesware parking lot. I'll, I'll come up. Where, where, I was telling the stream, where, what, you're in Polk County or somewhere around that area, right? We'll run it there. I'll meet you yeah. in your front yard, your backyard, your driveway. Meet me at Hard Rock on the field in the parking lot. Come to Tennessee. I don't care. I come to Tennessee, goddamn it. Hey, cool. You scared of me like you scared to take off that hat, cool. You scared of me, cool. <laughs> hey, you scared of me, cool. Lance, even your cool. dad, even your dad said he would put money on me. Your dad said he would put money on Coop over his own son, hey. Lance Long Leg Leggett. Hey, Coop, it's always, hey, it's always like the rat with the cheese is always a bait, a bait. You remember that? It's like the rat in the uh, you know that. It's like the rat with the cheese is always a trap. You know that, cool. So tell. I want your ass, cool. I'm, you know what? It's like you like the rat with the cheese is always a trap. That's what my daddy was just beating me up, cool. Cool. I want your ass, cool. I want to run your ass, cool. You don't want that shit. Well, so tell me this. Yeah. Tell me this. When are we gonna do this? For real? You going to the spring game? No. The spring, the spring game, Lance is only for exclusive people. I'm not in that club. Yes, you will, Coop. You come in with me, Coop. You come with me, Coop. You exclusive. Hey, Coop. Only reason I ain't come last time because my mom had got sick. If my mom would have got sick, Coop, I would have told your ass up, Coop. That's the only. He saved you, Coop. Do y'all believe him? He's he ha he can see the stream, or at least even after he can. He's on the road. Do y'all believe him? Who? Uh, I want to believe you, Lance. I do. But two two years in a row, after all that all that trash talk about smoking me, I don't know, bro. I don't really know who to believe. Third time's a charm. Just like that motherfucking Kool Aid man you got on that motherfucker. You sweet, Coop. You too sweet. You want me to be honest with you real quick before I let you go? What I think is happening? What? I think you needed three full years of training to feel confident enough to race me. If we're being real. Hey, Coop. Hey, I don't run some being gay on this motherfucking knee, Coop. I'm ready for your ass, Coop. Listen, you, listen, I was just... All you do is ride bikes, Lance. I run. <laughs> 
Hey, sip on that goddamn water in that cup. It's Friday night. You need to have some energy in that cup, man. I see you sipping on that cup, that cup over there, Coop. I know he don't want the smoke, y'all. He's all talk. Lance, well, hey, go ahead. Yeah. Hey, cool. You got to take the hat off for us tonight, cool. It's Friday night, baby. Take the, take the hat off for us tonight, cool. You got to give us a sneak Bro, Lance, I'll be, look. Where's the camera? <laughs> hey. Bro, I'd be over here like this. Look at this. I'm going to show you something. All right. Bro, I'd be over here. Hey, man. Like this right here. Man, man, this, on, man. Look, look at this elite stance right here. What do you got on this right here? Boom. It already, bro. Yeah. One step, one step, and I'd already be, you, you'd know you done messed up. You'd see me get in the stance, cool. and you're like, I'm cooked. I'm done. Yeah, Coop is over for your ass. Coop, I saw you. It's over for your ass. Coop, if I let you beat me, I'm supposed to be a goddamn it on this goddamn YouTube live right now. I'm let you beat me, Coop. All right, we'll we'll figure out a new date so you can duck me a third time, and I can say I'm the back to back to back triple forty yard dash champion over former Miami Hurricanes wide receiver Lance Leggett. Man, Coop. I love it. I love it. Hey, Coop, I love you. I love you, Coop. Man, thank you for letting me come in. There. I love you, Coop. Hey, you know I love you too, bro, but I'm still going to smoke you when we finally meet up. Hey, all day you going to be smoking some blunt. You ain't going to smoke this over here. Oh, right, get that <laughs> out of here. Hey, be safe, and, and and I'll talk to you later, Lance. All right, man, you be safe. Bro. All right, peace. <laughs> bro, I don't know. I, I do not advise anyone to be smoking whatever he's smoking and driving. <laughs> that's crazy duck, ducking me two years in a row I don't know bro hey while we had Lance on the line my man Ink Kane with the big 20 appreciate the love bro treats for Maxwell and Taco Bell for your ass <laughs> Oh, shoot. This dog is so spoiled already, Inked Cane. It is insane. We have no kids. We have no other dogs. I swear this dog has had a couple hamburgers. We we keep it light. You know, nothing crazy. We don't want to mess up his stomach. But he's got bones. He's got he's got a basket of toys. He has so much to play with. He doesn't he doesn't know what to do. So ain't cane that'll go straight to the treat fund. I literally have, I keep treats right here on my desk, ready to go. So ain't cane, my man. I'll let Max know that's from you, but I'm definitely gonna get some Taco Bell. Definitely gonna get some Taco Bell. If I come to Miami, you guys have to take me to Hard Rock. Let's do it. I agree. Melissa, Melissa is her nickname is the South Florida chauffeur for a reason. She'll take you to all the places. And I'll, I'll be in the back. I'll go too. You're a great dude, but you ain't winning against Lance unless you hobble him Tanya Harding style. I will beat Lance like it. He's washed up. I will beat Lance like it. There's a reason why he's ducking me. You guys think I'm playing. What's up, Alexander Sosa? It's good to see you, bro. How you been? So I guess that's about it. I, I, I know I said I might open up the phone lines, but I'll, I'm just going to be real. Your boy Coop is exhausted. It's been a crazy week. I've been having to adjust my schedule, trying to get the doggo on schedule, and it's just been wild. I'm going to try to get an early start tomorrow. Uh, we've got spring practice number six, so we'll do a full uh, a full recap video for that. And then I have a, another video planned for this weekend, so it should be pretty fun. But Melissa did drive me everywhere. And we got to hit up Flanagan's. Joel's never had Flanagan's, Melissa. So what's in the cup Coop is drinking from? I don't know. I don't know. The custom U cup for my man Joel. I don't know. You get a peek through the straw. 
already putting together the tailgate supplies heck yeah it's crazy so so right because it seems like it takes forever to get here but then by the time it gets here you're like wait a minute i don't have this done or that done and you feel like you're so ahead right and then boom it's here i'm ready for it to be here i'm not gonna lie like the team needs time to get it together right figure everything out but like i want it to be here now i, I i'm ready for football because spring is kind of quenching that thirst but it's it's not quite enough doggo follows his own schedule he does he does what he wants it's called pity talk to lance talk to lance cane juice i don't know if i i think uh coach hayes has a has a a trademark on that if i um, i can't call it cane juice because coach hayes might sue me i don't know if he's in here or not but he might sue me what's your 40 time uh, faster than lance leggett that's my 40 time hey i'll see you later i'll see you later jenny definitely not kool-aid we know it ain't kool-aid it's sealed it's sealed so it's not this it's, it's not the kool-aid he could sign off a grant of rights for cane juice uh, on that note shout outs to the the top dono tonight my man joel davis with the 99 99 times two ain't cane showing some love i appreciate you bro zach jones popped off tonight and I, sorry i missed that too also man said coop you are sexy bro nah let me stop hey i mean zach jones i appreciate the two melissa showing me some love with the five and the two traveling fools re-upping that canes fan membership and uh 850 matthew let's not forget about him chris gaffney and tropical who kicked it off with the 305 i really do appreciate y'all uh, the streams again the last two weeks have been a little all over the place but i'll get my stuff together we'll get the doggo on somewhat of a schedule and i'll try to be prepared tonight just shifted gears because again it was going to be spring and kool-aid talk and it went from suing the acc well not suing the acc <laughs> and then a small amount of kool-aid talk and then small talk you just never know what's going to happen do you believe in our running game if those guys can stay healthy i would like to hope so i'm drinking a little bit of the trevante citizen kool-aid but it's not really fair not really smart fair is the wrong word it's not really smart for me to do that because trevante citizen is unproven right now so I would like to think he has a very high ceiling and that if he stays healthy, he'll do good, especially behind this O-line, which is hopefully decent, but I don't really know. Fletcher, that's a really tough injury that he's dealing with, so that's scary if he re-aggravates it. Chris Johnson is fast, but you got to have more than just speed. Also has to prove himself. Wheatley Humphrey's fast, still got to prove himself like Again, I, I do still see a lot of question marks, and it's not about being negative and trying to focus on those things. It's just, it's the truth. I've had the same packet for years. Do these expire? Does Kool-Aid expire? They do. This expired May 4th of 2023. It sure did. Come on, camera. There it is. Best Buy, May 4th, 2023. So this expired uh, almost a year ago. Hmm. Yep. Well, we can't celebrate and drink that specific Kool-Aid if Miami goes all the way and wins a national championship. That was my plan. Fletcher has that foot injury that ends careers. That's why I'm so worried about him. I'm super worried about him because Fletcher is, we only got a taste 
of what Fletcher is capable of. And that's that type of injury that it it, it could I, I again I don't I don't want to seem like I'm focusing on the negative, but it could be very problematic. And that could be something that he deals with for uh, the rest of his career and could potentially even end it. Hopefully it's not that serious, but just saying. So we need him to recover because I'll be real, I like those guys, but I wouldn't want it to be game one and it be like Citizen, Johnson, Wheatley, Humphrey, or plug in again, however you want to look at that running back room. I would like to have Fletcher in that mix somewhere, but we'll see. Don Chaney would be in a prime spot had he stayed. He would be. Absolutely would be because he warped, it, it, with Parrish gone, Chaney would have been the next guy that has the most game day experience. Absolutely. That's pretty wild, man. That's pretty wild, Firefighter Kane, when you think about it. Dang. Because I was a huge Don Chaney fan. Big time. Kool-Aid is like Twinkies. They may technically expire, but they'll be consumed even after an apocalypse. True. True, Allen. And true, and that's bad. I have forgotten about AJ Allen. And that's just because, well, he's injured right now. So I think AJ Allen can be better. I think he's hopefully had time to improve some of his pass protection. But still, even so, even so, I'd really like to have Fletcher. I guess that's my point. I'd, I'd really like to have a healthy Fletcher if possible. But anyways, I'm going to wrap it up. I know a lot of people are hitting the hay. Enjoy your weekend, guys. Tomorrow's Saturday. Again, I'll do the recap video for the sixth uh, the sixth spring practice. And I just appreciate all the support tonight and just on the channel in general. Enjoy talking football. Enjoy talking just nonsense and hanging out and chilling with you guys. Hopefully next week, next Friday, we'll have a little more to talk about. I'll try to be better prepared for you guys. And I'm sure we'll get into something. We'll have a good time either way. But hey, come on now. Come on now. You know, you know what to do. Plus, we still have, don't forget, it's another week closer to college football 25, which means simulations and running it 1v1 against you guys live on stream where you can showcase your skills and how good you are because you guys say, uh, so many of you say that that's your game. I want to see it. And you'll have your shot. You'll have your opportunity. We're going to find out. Go Canes. I appreciate y'all. I'll see you tomorrow for the recap video.